Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. What a mighty God we serve. Glory be to God in the highest place. Welcome once again to our online program. Haley, will I seek you live devotionals of the Bible Academy? It's been a while since we've been online. Busy for the kingdom of God. Well, praise God, we can come live again on this program because indeed the Lord is good and his mercy is endured forever. It's been a month of mercy in our ministry and as we wrap up the month of april i desire to share with you briefly some of the teachings we've had and so you can be blessed through the message of god's word let's pray heavenly father we worship you we adore you we glorify you we magnify your holy name indeed great is your mercy Towards me, your loving kindness towards me, your tender mercies I see day after day. Forever faithful towards me, always providing for me. Great is your mercy towards me. Great is your grace. Hallelujah. Father, breathe into your word. Think through my mind and speak through my lips of praise. Grant unto me as well as your people online today the spirit of wisdom. Grant us revelation in your knowledge. Let the eyes of our understanding be enlightened. Help us to know the hope of your calling, the riches of the glory of your inheritance in the saints, the exceeding greatness of your power, Lord, as at work towards us who believe. According to the workings of your mighty power, which you wrought in Christ Jesus, when you raised him from the dead. Thank you, Heavenly Father. We give you praise and all glory. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. Amen and amen. Friends, welcome once again to our online program, Eli Will I Seek You, live devotionals of the Bible Academy. The Bible Academy is a citadel of biblical education. And counseling. We share the knowledge of God's word with God's people. Our mission is to reach more people in more places with the power of God's spoken word and the reality of his promises in our present world. Praise the Lord. In our ministry, we've been speaking about the power of God's mercy. And that's what I'm going to share with you tonight. Because indeed, great is God's mercy towards us. I'm reading from the book of Psalms 102 verse 13. The Bible said thou shalt arise and have mercy upon Zion instead for the time to favor her yea the third time is come. I believe very strongly that this is a season of mercy for everyone listening to me, everyone associated with our ministry. And that is also because the God that we believe in, the God that we serve, is a God of mercy. There's something about the mercy of God that it has two sides. It has what is called a universal mercy and an activated mercy. And the universal mercy comes as a result of the principles of God's love. God loves people. The Bible tells us in the book of John chapter 3 verse 16, For God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten son. God's mercy, as it relates to the universe, is for every human being. God is rich in mercy. The Bible said in Ephesians chapter 2 verse 4 to 5, that God is rich in mercy because of his great love. So this universal mercy is a product of the love of God. That's why God showed his love towards us when we were yet sinners. 
Christ died for us. The universal mercy of God is a product of the universal love of God. God does not love Christians alone in this context. He loves every of his creature. He loves the animals. He loves the birds. He loves the plants on the field. He loves uh, the beasts in the forest. He loves the lion, the tiger, the monkeys. He loves every of his creatures. And that's as a matter of his universal love. In that context, God's mercy is to all of his creatures. But there is another version of God's mercy. I call it the activated mercy of God. It comes through his covenant of grace by the blood of Jesus Christ. The covenant of grace. The book of Hebrews tells us, chapter 4, that we should come, verse 16, boldly to the throne of grace that we may obtain mercy. In this context, the mercy we receive is as a result of the grace of God. The mercy we receive is as a result of the grace of God. Let's turn our Bible to the book of Hebrews chapter 4. Very interesting. So we enjoy the universal mercy of God as human beings. It came as a result of our humanity, God's mercy, universal mercy, received by human beings because he's a creature. But the activated mercy of God is what I call covenanted mercy, mercy that came as a result of the covenant of grace in Christ Jesus. In the book of Hebrews chapter 4, verse 16, it says, let us therefore come, Boldly to the throne of grace. Notice the word throne of grace. What do we get from the throne of grace? We obtain mercy. And then we find grace to help us in time of need. I'm talking today about the power of God's mercy. You see, there's a difference between the mercy of God, as we call it the divine mercy, as related to believers, compared to the mercy of God to human beings. Now, there's, there's what is called the secular mercy or the, the general mercy. It means leniency. It's the disposition to show kindness, clemency, compassion, or grace, or what you may call loving kindness. It implies lack of severity in punishing offenses. It's called mercy. It's like your child who has committed an offense and they say, mommy or dad, please have mercy on me. Don't beat me, have mercy on me. And that's natural. It's, it's a product of human kindness. It's a product of our humanity. I live in a world where I've seen people who are not even believers showing kindness to their fellow human beings. Scripturally, human kindness is acceptable because we're all first and foremost, human beings before we became Christians. But beyond our humanity, there's what we call Christianity. This Christianity is the full representation of all that Jesus came to do on earth. Christ came to express God's mercy to all of us. And by covenant, we can partake of that mercy. Talking about scriptural mercy, it's more than clemency or leniency. It is unmeted judgment. That is where it starts from. We obtain mercy and we find grace. So it seems to me like mercy and grace are two sides of one coin. And we get both from the throne of grace. It said we should come boldly to the throne of grace, to obtain mercy, number one side of the coin, and find grace. So we obtain mercy, we find grace. Meaning, we obtain mercy because of the act of God. We find grace because of our seeking God. Jesus said, if you seek, you will find. God said in Jeremiah, you will seek me, you will find me when you search for me with all your heart. Now, mercy precedes grace in the context of Hebrews chapter 4, verse 16. He said, we obtain mercy and we find grace. What does that mean? 
first we have to receive divine appeasement, and that's mercy, where God refuses to judge our wrong. You see, mercy is not without a price. It's though an executed judgment for us, but it is not an unexecuted judgment. It simply means someone took your place in judgment. It is divine appeasement because someone else paid the price. Jesus paid the price. He took our place in judgment on the cross. He took the punishment we deserve for our sin. He did not deserve to die, but Jesus willingly took our place and experienced death for us. That is the birth of the New Testament mercy. When Jesus died on the cross in his death, he took three kinds of judgment on our behalf. Number one, spiritual death. And that's when he said, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Why have you departed from me? Jesus took our death on the cross. He also took our physical death. Remember how he was beaten? Bible said yeah, he took 39 strokes of Roman soldiers weep. And the chastisement of our peace was laid upon him by stripes we were healed. Jesus went through physical death, physical pain, physical torture, physical stress. His beating was so much that it pierced his body. Ultimately, he yielded his ghost. He died. That's physical death. And lastly, eternal death. The Bible said God said he, he, he did not leave his soul in hell. He will not suffer his only one to see corruption. Jesus went to preach to the spirits in the prison. He went to hell for you. He went to hell for me. So he gave us spiritual mercy, physical mercy, eternal mercy. He went to hell so that you and I would not need to go to hell. But that's not without our responsible action towards his sacrifice. We believe in all that he has done for us. We respond to what he did in what the Bible calls the obedience of faith. Now, these threefold mercy, spiritual mercy, physical mercy, eternal mercy, happens in this order. First, spiritually, Jesus died. Second, physically, Jesus gave up his ghost. And third, eternally, Jesus was led to hell. But the Bible said God did not leave his soul in hell. He raised him up. From the dead. Now, this mercy of God, this New Testament mercy of God, has produced different manifestations of God's kindness. Number one, this mercy of God is what we call compassion in action. When God looked at us, the Bible said, as the as the Father has compassion on his son, so the Lord has had compassion on us. In Jude verse 22, the Bible said of some have compassion, making a difference. When you look at the ministry of Jesus, majorly, most of the miracles he did, the Bible tells us he was moved with compassion and he acted in mercy. So God's compassion is what the mercy produces. Number two, God's forbearance. When God overlooks your wrongdoing, and beyond your limitation as a human being, he reaches out to you. The Bible said he knows our frailty. He knows that we are but men. This does not mean that God is indulging our sins. It simply means that God is reaching out to us in spite of our sins. Number three, God's forgiveness in whom we have redemption through his blood. Even the forgiveness of our sins, God forgives our sins. But in, in receiving forgiveness, he expects repentance. Proverbs 28, verse 13. He that covereth his sins shall not prosper. He that confess and forsake them will obtain mercy. So there has to be a response of repentance from us and responsibly so before we can obtain the mercy of God's forgiveness. If we confess our sins, 1 John 1, 9, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. That's forgiveness. In whom we have redemption through his blood, even the forgiveness of sins. And number four, God's benevolence. God's benevolence. God's charity. God giving to us generously. 
God not withholding good from us. That's God's benevolence. God's goodness out of his own personality as a charitable God. God's benevolence. God will never withhold good things from those who walk uprightly. David said, I was young and now I'm old. I've never seen the righteous forsaken or his seed begging bread. That's a product of God's benevolence. God was benevolent towards Israel in the wilderness when he provided food for them. The Bible says God furnishes table in the wilderness. God's love, God's love, it's first and foremost universal. But in the New Testament, as we receive salvation in Christ, we begin to walk in the reality of that love. God's love. John 3, 16, God still loved the word. But Romans chapter 5, God commend his love towards us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. And then the Bible said in Romans 5 that this same love of God has been shared abroad in our hearts by the Holy Ghost. And number six, God's liberality, meaning God's gesture, God's, God's goodness, God just lavishing us with so much because he's a giving God. Say with me, God is a giving God. Is a giving God. Is a giving God. God loves to give. He said to us in precedence, give, it shall be given unto you. Good measure, press down, shaking together, running over shall men give to your bosom. In giving to God, God will cause us to have more than we ever gave. The Bible said God will multiply our seed sown and increase the fruit of our righteousness. And number seven, God's kindness, God's goodness. For the Lord is good and his mercies endure forever. These sevenfold manifestations of the mercy of God in covenant, we can obtain. The Bible said we should come boldly to the throne of grace and find grace to help us in times of it. Mercy is one side of the coin of grace. Grace has two sides, like I mentioned. Unmerited favor is the one side, and unmerited or unexecuted judgment is the other, other side. In the display, of God's mercy, God became the judge and the justifier. How do I mean? He judged his son so he can justify us who are sinners. Jesus, through his death, he brought many sons unto glory. He took our place in judgment so we can take his place in justification and righteousness. It is called redemptive mercy. Beyond the mercy of forgiveness, the mercy of redemption, God also releases mercy to those who are in need, who are suffering. He has mercy on the sick. The Bible said the ministry of Jesus was characterized by his show of mercy towards the sick. He showed mercy to those who were suffering, who needed healing, who needed comfort, comfort who needed to be alleviated from their pain and to have rest in distress. In Matthew chapter 17, verse 15, the Bible tells us, a man approached Jesus Christ, knelt before him and cried and said, oh Lord, have mercy on my son. Well, the son had seizure and he was suffering greatly. The demon spirit that was behind the seizure would sometimes drop him inside fire and in water. Well, as the man cried to Jesus, Jesus asked him, what do you want me to do for you? Have mercy on my son. And Jesus responded in compassion. The Bible said he was moved with compassion. And he healed the son. Today, I pray for you that God's mercy will locate you where you are. God's mercy will take you out of your pain and turn your pain to profit. God's mercy will bring you out of limitations to abundance. God's mercy will take you out of penury yeah. and poverty to prosperity. God will make all grace abound towards you so that you always have all sufficiency in all things and be fruitful in every good work. I pray for you that you will receive the saving mercy of God when you are in trouble. 
God will save you. More importantly, God will save you from sin. Hallelujah. And get you born again. Get you filled with the Holy Ghost. And get you going for his son Jesus. Number two, God will give you healing mercy. If you are sick in your body, healing will come your way. In the name of Jesus, I command healing in your body. I command sickness to go. I command deliverance for the captive. Psalm 107 verse 20. He sent his word. His word healed them and delivered them from their destruction. As I speak God's word to you, I command healing and deliverance for you in Jesus' name. God will comfort you on every side. The Bible said, comfort ye, comfort ye, my people. I pray the same Jesus that comforted the household of Lazarus so that after four days that he was dead, he raised Lazarus from the dead. Divine comfort will come your way. Everything that is dead in your life will receive the resurrection power of Jesus Christ. And lastly, God will give you provisional mercy. In Mark chapter 8, verse 2 to 3, Jesus preached to a hungry crowd. And at some point, he told his disciples, the people have been with me for three days. Let's feed them. And the Bible said, Jesus had compassion on the people and he provided food for them. I pray for you, wherever you are in the path of the world, you are hungry, your children are hungry and you're worried about where will the next meal come from. I pray for the mercy of God's provision that God will supply your need according to his riches in glory, that your supply will not be limited to what your government provides for you but you will live by divine and heavenly economy. As the scripture says, God will supply all of your needs according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. The Lord Jesus is moved with compassion today to bring forth abundance of provision into your life. However, lastly, in order for you to experience the mercy of God so much in this month and beyond, i like to encourage you to sow what I call mercy seed. In Matthew chapter 5, Jesus said, Blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. So if you want to obtain mercy from the Lord, put mercy in action. Reach out to somebody in need. Give to the needy. Help somebody who needs mercy. Apart from being a Christian, be humane. Show kindness. Don't turn your eyes away from those who can get help from you. Blessed are the merciful, Jesus said, for they shall obtain mercy. Matthew chapter 5, verse 7. Shall we pray? Heavenly Father, God, we thank you for the opportunity to come before your presence. I speak the healing mercy to those who are sick. In the name of Jesus. I speak provisional mercy for those who are hungry and who need finances, who wants to pay bills in the name of Jesus. I pray salvation mercy for that fellow who is saying, I am a sinner, I need forgiveness. Well, I pray in the name of Jesus that your sins be forgiven you. Say with me, Lord Jesus, come into my heart. Be my Lord and Savior. I repent of my wrongdoing. I obtain mercy today as I repent of my sins. In the name of Jesus. Proverbs 28, 13 says, He that covers his sins shall not prosper, for he that confess and forsake shall obtain mercy. I receive mercy today. Say with me, I receive mercy as I confess in the name of Jesus. Lord, for every one of us in our homes, in our families, may we enjoy the mercy of God. May the mercy of God abound towards us. May the grace of God abound towards us in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. We give you all of the praise and glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. God bless you. Grace to you and shalom.